Hi YouTube, so we're back again at the hangar and I just thought I'd give you an update on what my progress is. I'm getting ready to start construction. Uh, I haven't really talked uh, since I've been at the hangar, but uh, I'm at a shared hangar at West Houston Airport and I have a fantastic uh, uh, spot here in the hangar to do the build on the two Lanceers. So actually this car will get moved over uh, and I'll occupy all of this space. I bought just about everything I can think of that was new. Uh, new toolbox and I've ordered a lot of foam and a lot of other parts, uh, glass, everything is ready to go. I've got my parts up here and also, you know, for example, let's uh, take a look. I'm surprised I didn't have this unlocked already. So we'll pause for a second. Okay, so in that pause, I've unlocked things. Just wanna show you some of the tools and equipment that you might need if you're building this. First off, I bought the stainless steel version of this 72 or four inch wide uh, Husky toolbox that has a stainless steel top. This will be a fabulous uh, flat work surface to uh, do small parts construction on once I'm ready to get started. And you're gonna need a lot of clamps. I bought a whole lot of clamps just before the Christmas holidays. I've got paint brushes and lots of other tools here. And I still have some empty drawers. I'm not even sure where I have everything. Zip ties for temporarily fixing things. This is my plastic tubing that I'll be using per the instructions to level the spars at uh, the last bit of last step. Basically you run this across the floor, fill it up uh, with water, and you use it where the level of the water is on both sides of the fuselage to uh, fix it in place to make sure that it's uh, identical on both sides of the fuselage level. Uh, new Clecos, uh, Cleco gun, there's my mixing sticks, and just a bunch of parts that came with the kit. In fact, a lot of these drawers are full of that. So I've got uh, two bags of micro and a bag of uh, cotton flox, and then I've also got virgin acetone and a bunch of bid tape. And I've also bought, because I'm going to be doing some molding, some fiberglass uh, PVA release film because I only have one of certain parts. And then I also, to go with that, I bought a uh, gel coat, which I'll be using to make the tooling plug for some of the parts. And there's my mixing cups. And then I also have uh, some Loctite 9430 epoxy adhesive. Uh, which will come in handy at some point down the road. And let's see what else is in all these drawers. So this is just a bunch of parts. These are the windshields, the rear glass for both kits, uh, brakes, some parts that were already fabricated. You can see my wheels in here. And those will probably stay put for quite some time. Uh, electrical, tie downs, things that I used to get it here. Let's see, I've got some sandpaper and someone had already started running a string to do the uh, straight line pull for the um, uh, 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 vertical stabilizer. That's where that string came from. New peaking shears. And then I've got a bunch of, uh, got a coping saw and X-Acto knives. And then as well as just a whole lot of parts that came with the kit. So a lot of these won't get pulled out for quite some time. There's brakes in here and lots of other parts. And then of course, these are all the ribs that I fabricated before the Christmas holiday. And these are closeout ribs, wing ribs. These are vertical stab pieces and they're all labeled. And a lot of people have been asking what I intended to do with these. So the way that this went down was I scanned the blueprints at full size. And then I went through the painstaking process of tracing all the parts and then making a CAD model in AutoCAD and a DXF file so that I could then uh, create a CNC tool path and in order to verify and then cut out all the parts so they would be accurate. And then I realized after talking to everyone that the Lance Airs are not exactly symmetrical from side to side. But it doesn't really matter because I can still use what I've done to make parts. So what I did was I printed out the parts and I'm going to be using all of these to um, test fit all of them throughout the build. And then I will make any adjustments that I need to the CAD model based on the, the 
cardboard cutout templates. And then from that, I will be able to adjust the uh, DXF CAD model, and then I'll be able to run a CNC router, tabletop router on uh, at a maker space here in Houston. And I'll cut all of the actual parts out of the uh, Nomex honeycomb sandwich panel uh, with CNC precision. So I won't have to weigh all these up or anything. Uh, the, I'm actually able to get the panels for relatively cheap, under about a thousand dollars. Uh, I was really surprised about that, and they are also fire retardant, um, and they're built by an aerospace company in San Antonio, so I'm buying them direct from the factory. So yeah, so that'll be an exciting bit down the road. Some more hardware, nitro gloves. I'll get things more organized for the build here, but that's where I'm at with all the tools. So I also have the epoxy pump, and then have all the 7781 uh, glass here in this uh, box. And then just basically I'm crammed in here right now with all of these uh, parts all around me. There's the windshields in the box and the belly pan. There's the Mark II tail that I went to uh, Spain to pick up. And this is the slow build kit. So let's talk about this for a little bit. The Lancer 360 or 320 series aircraft come in basically couple of flavors so the original uh, was a slow build kit which is what I've purchased here the slow build kit has all of the parts like the main spar separate and you have to put the whole thing together this is the trailing edge spar and then this is the main spar and I've kind of got it fixed into place in the fuselage just loosely whereas the fast build kit the, the entire box section of the middle, which is what this kit is, is a fast build Lancer 360. And the wing saddles come pre-installed from the factory. Everything is pretty much done. There wasn't a lot of work that had to be done here. And the entire box center section comes pre-assembled uh, and glued. So you can see, They've already done a few bits of work to install landing gear doors uh, on this one, on the kit that I bought. But this is entirely ready to flip over the fast build kit on the bottom side and to mount this in place. Whereas the slow build kit, it's a little more involved. So we have to follow the instructions to build this another way. Now I've thought about building a jig to clone off of the other one, but I really don't feel like that's necessary. I'm just going to follow the directions. If anyone's been following along, I've actually 3D scanned every part in the aircraft because they are, they're not scarce, but, and you can find lots of these on the secondary market, but it is kind of a hassle because you just have to hunt for them. So anyway, um, I'll show you a few other tidbits. I bought these uh, fabulous rigid uh, extendable um, sawhorses, but unfortunately the boards that came on it were too short to uh, span the fuselage in the front. So you can see that I've actually replaced it. And I went ahead and also replaced the other one, but I've kept the second boards for future work. But these are really great uh, sawhorses, very sturdy. Uh, I highly recommend them. These are the uh, uh, rigid lumberjack adjustable sawhorses. You can raise them the height off the ground uh, and they're very ruggedly built and they collapse. So those are the nicest ones I've ever owned. So let's talk about the Lancer kit itself. Everyone has seen me do all the scanning, and I did that for posterity, but also, also for future modifications. But before we get there, we've got a lot of work to do. And I thought I'd point out some interesting things about the Lancer, even though this kit is from the 90s. Uh, I thought it was interesting to point out that uh, the main spar and the trailing edge spar are both constructed with fiberglass, but it's also on a schedule with a carbon fiber cap strip that runs the full length of the main spars. You can see it on the edge here, the black. 
and it, it basically runs, I think it's either pull truted carbon fiber or it could be just a uh, fiber, but it's all laid in one direction all the way across the main spar and it spans side to side. So and it looks to be something like a quarter of an inch thick on both sides. And if that's the case, you're looking at, that's actually thicker in the middle, it looks like it tapers off to the sides. So you're, that's where your real strength comes from in the uh, main spars on the 360. And I'd like to point out that if you go ask people in the forums about building one of these aircraft, they will tell you that there's never been a structural failure on the Lancer 360 from main spar collapse or anything like that. These things are built like tanks. This main spar is is uh, plus, this aircraft is plus 9G ultimate, uh, which means you're not going to experience a failure of the main spar until you get to plus 9Gs, uh, which means you're not going to break it, <laughs> essentially. But um, it's probably even stronger than that. But since I don't have one to do any kind of destructive testing with, we'll just take everyone's word for it at this point. But yeah, it's just an interesting thought to believe that they used uh, this unidirectional carbon fiber uh, all the way back in the early 90s. They were really kind of at the leading edge of carbon fiber technology, I think, uh, late 80s, early 90s. And then with the uh, Nomex uh, core material, which is uh, fire retardant Nomex honeycomb core. And um, I have since talked to some of the original employees, just thought it was interesting to do so. And I've learned that uh, the the parts were laid up in the Philippines, the later parts, uh, and the fuselage comes in two halves, and the uh, they are not done in an autoclave, but they are uh, done in an oven. So they're vacuum bagged, uh, prepreg, in an oven with uh, the fiberglass cloth. And it's quite strong, and most people will try to say, well, carbon fiber is so much stronger. Believe it or not, the maximum strength of a fiberglass uh, body like this is only about 15% uh, less than a equivalent carbon fiber structure the same uh, size. The big difference is, is in the flexural modulus or, or the, uh, how much you can move this before it breaks. So on a carbon fiber version, it's only about 4% elongation at break. And this would be, I misspoke, I said flexural modulus, but the elongation at break would be about 4% on carbon fiber. And it's something more like 14%, if I'm not mistaken, on e-glass. So you can see how easy this is to flex. If this same kit was sitting here in carbon fiber, um, it would be far more stiff. So that changes a lot of the dynamics. If, for example, in resonance frequencies, if you're an engineer, you'd understand what I'm talking about. The natural frequency of the fuselage uh, is quite a bit different on the carbon fiber versions. But uh, I digress a little bit. One of the big modifications that the people that race these are doing is they are wrapping the tail cone with additional fiberglass on the outside of the structure. And this kind of ties back to a article that was written in the 90s about um, large tail or Mark II tail versions of the 360 having uh, potential for flutter. Now, since I'm going to be flying this aircraft at a higher altitude than most, uh, flutter actually is affected by altitude, not just by airspeed. So what I plan to do is to use a UL Power 520T with a four blade constant speed prop. Now, a lot of people have said you're going to be slower than an equivalent two blade prop, but they're not taking into account uh, exactly comparing apples to apples. So because I'm going to be running that a turbocharged boosted engine, it's not just normalized. The engine makes uh, a very significant torque curve. It's about almost 430 uh, foot pounds of torque. 
and it makes somewhere around four 16 foot pounds just off idle all the way up to wide open throttle. So, so what does that mean? It means that I, at full boost at altitude, this the torque of the engine will provide me the ability to have a much higher or steep pitched prop on the constant speed prop. And the numbers are working out to somewhere around uh, 300 miles per hour, which is smoking fast for a uh, aircraft with only 220 horsepower. But because of that speed at altitude, uh, which the math works out to about 300 miles an hour at 15,000 foot density altitude, probably won't be flying up there all the time unless it's a cross country kind of thing. But because of that, I am going to be doing some modifications per the original flutter analysis because this aircraft will have the Mark II tail. Uh, and because it has the Mark II tail, I'm going to make sure that um, the aircraft uh, doesn't come apart in midair. And no one has ever really said they've experienced flutter on the Lancer, but then again, I'm kind of getting into rarefied territory up high. So yeah, right now the plans are to finish the wing saddles and uh, once we get the main spar in, we can start closing out the bottom of the fuselage. And then we'll be able to flip this one over and put it on gear. And just after we finish that, simultaneously, I'm going to be working on the fast build kit. So we're going to put both of these guys together side by side. And I'm hoping by the time we get to the spring that we'll have both of these fuselages uh, on gear. And of course... Firewall forward, we'll just have sandbags to uh, balance them out so they'll sit on their nose. But uh, yeah, there's a lot of modifications coming down the pipe. And it's going to be a lot of videos. I'm going to break it up into short chunks. Uh, I'm going to try to do a really good job of documenting the build. Uh, sort of a series on how to put together a Lancer 360, and it'll cover both the fast build and the, the um, slow build versions. And I did, I'm doing this for really a couple of things, a couple of reasons. One is that I'm about the whole idea of finally getting to do this. Um, so that's going to be fun for me. But aside from putting it together, uh, there's also a couple of things that I think will be fun for others. If you're looking for a fast aircraft for not a lot of money that you can build for yourself, that's two place, uh, that can be flown economically with a 320 sized engine, uh, the Lance Air 360 is a great opportunity. There are likely more than a thousand of these left out in the wild. Um, in various states, you might not be able to find all the parts you want, but you can pick up a Lance Air 360 kit like I did. Uh, for a very reasonable rate. I bought both of these kits. Now they're incomplete. They're missing a few parts. Uh, for example, I only have one seat, uh, one set of seat bottoms, which is why I uh, talked about making molds. I'm going to have to clone those. Um, but I bought both of these kits for about uh, $10,000. So two kits for ten grand, And that's just a crazy low amount of money for an aircraft with the capability that this has. And we'll cover more about their speed and capabilities as we get into it. But I'm going to try to do a really good job of breaking this up into chunks that are manageable for each section of the build. We're going to follow the instructions. I'm going to talk through it. And then I'm going to also offer... Uh, I suppose, a engineer's opinion about it um, with some potential improvements over doing things the way that they did them then. I've already found a couple of things that were faster for me to do my way, uh, such as making these little wing saddles. There'll be a little clip coming up on that. Uh, but yeah, I'm sorry, main spar saddles. So sorry, I'll try to be very concise on that but yeah we have our uh, epoxy pump ready to go for our parts and uh, we're just waiting on another piece of uh, one inch thick uh, nomex to arrive small piece from aircraft spruce and we'll start putting this sucker together so stay tuned for the first uh, build segment 
coming up in the next week. Everyone have a good evening, and we'll talk again soon. Thanks. Subscribe to the channel. Share this with your friends. Let's try to have fun with it.